plot the line y is equal to 6 over 9 x plus 3. Okay, so the way we handle this bad boy is we say, well, what is the y-intercept was the slope? The y-intercept is plus 3, so we know that the line is going to be passing through this point. The slope is 6 over 9, that is rise over run. So for every 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we go 9 over, and that means here, and 6 over 9, yeah, it seems about right. And then you just draw a line, you use your ruler, I'm using my, my imaginary ruler, you draw a line between those points and then you've got, you've got the friggin' plotted line. You could do another one, you do another point if you wanted to make it a little better. Let's do another one. So we gotta go, what was 6 over 9, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 9 in this direction. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <clears throat> So your line should be passing through these three points. You just kind of eyeball it like that. Yeah, take a little swerve there sometimes, but that's okay. There you go. Plot in your line. Better with a ruler, but you get the idea. Next question. What do we got here? Determine whether the following points are on the line, negative 2, 1, 3, and 5. And you could obviously do this by inspection if you've plotted the line, but I told you, uh, solve algebraically where possible. So, I mean, just to say, we could go, you know, like negative 2, 1, definitely not on the line, right? What is it? What's the other one? 3 and, three and 5. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, that's probably on the line. Let's make sure. So how do you make sure? Well, <clears throat> all points on the line must satis satisfy the equation, right? So if the equation is uh, y is equal, let's get some white here, y is equal to uh, six over nine x plus three, if the point has to be on the line, then uh, we just, Plug in here. Well, let me. Sh I'll show you one of them. So it was. What was it again? Three five. So we put a five in here. Six over nine times three plus three. So six times three is eighteen over nine is two. So it's two plus three equal to five. That's true. So that means that five three or three three five is on the line. Uh, where's the other one? Negative 2, 1. Uh, well, let's, let's do it, I guess. Let's do it. 6 over 9. And was it negative 2? I think it was negative 2. Plus 3. And so negative 2 times 6, 1 is equal to negative 12 over 9 plus 3. Negative 12 over 9 is equal to... What was that again? It's going to be four thirds. Yeah. So we got negative four thirds plus nine thirds. Three is nine thirds, right? And which is equal to five over three, which is not equal to one. And therefore, this point is not on the line. That's how you solve those. It's pretty gosh darn simple. Next question. Find the point of intersection of the lines y is equal to 6 over 9 x plus 3 and y is equal to 2x plus 7. So for this boy here, what we are gonna do, we're gonna do is uh, we basically need to find the point that satisfies both of these equations simultaneously. And uh, the way you do that is is you basically bring them into a single equation. Um, now you can solve it, you can do a system of equations and subtract and multiply parts to isolate. What I like to do for these is I like to just substitute one into the other. So, how does that work? Well, I mean, I don't really, I don't want to graph these. I'm not, I'm not going to graph them. I'll graph them later on, on a little thing I'll show you. But, uh, the way you do it is you go, okay, well, y is equal to 6 over 9x plus 3. Y is equal to 2x plus 7. So let's rearrange this guy. So y is equal to 2x plus 7 is the same as saying uh, x is equal to 
y minus 7, right, uh, divided by 2. You can isolate x doing, you know, your basic algebra here. I'm not going to show that. If you don't know your basic algebra, then you gotta you got to learn that. Learn it somewhere. Maybe Khan Academy teaches that. Anyways, so now we have a solution for x. We can now substitute this x into our other equation. We didn't have to do this. We could have just, it doesn't matter. Anyways, so I'm going to substitute this into the other equation, and I get y is equal to 6 over 9 times, and we substitute this x, which is this thing, into the x here. We get y minus 7 over 2 plus 3. There you go. So now you have an equation with only one unknown variable, y. So now we can solve for this y, and then we'll know the y of the point that satisfies both these equations. And the way you do that is it's just kind of annoying. Um, there's no real super easy way. I mean, 6 over 9, this is obviously 3. It's always 2 over 3, right? So this is 2 over 3. Let's just fucking, yeah, let's rewrite that right now. Get out of here. 2 over 3. And multiply this over. <clears throat> so we got 2y minus 14 over 6 plus 3. And then, so, I mean, I can then y minus y over 3, 2y over 6 is y over 3, so move that over here, subtract both sides, is equal to 3 minus 14 over 6 is 7 over 3, over 3, and that means, okay, so y minus y over 3, is the same. We can factor out y. So that means that would be y 1 minus 1 third, right? Because if you multiply this in, you distribute, you would get this. It's just undistributing the y. And that is equal to 2 thirds. So I can just replace this 2 over 3. And then this is going to be 9 thirds minus 7 thirds equals 2 thirds. So y is equal to 2 thirds. And y times 2 thirds is equal to 2 thirds, which means y is equal to 1. There we go. So y is equal to 1 is the y. So our point is somewhere on here. Point of intersection, somewhere on here. Uh, now, to get the other one, it's quite simple. We already know one point, so we can just plug that into the equation here. So we can go one, no, this is black, it's no good. One is equal to, well, I mean, we already have x is equal to y minus 7 over 2. So we could just do x is equal to 1 minus 7 over 2, which is equal to negative 6 over 2, which is equal to negative 3. So x is negative 3. Our point of intersection, wrong color. Point of intersection should be right here. Now let's do, let's do some stuff. Check our work. So I got desmos.com here, and I plotted my two lines, and you can see that they intersect here at negative 3, 1, which is what we calculated algebraically. Happy day. Next question. Determine whether these two line segments intersect and where. All right. So, obviously it would be very easy to uh, solve this problem just by graphing. So, I mean, we could do 0, 7 and 4, 15, wow, I mean, I can't really graph that very easily, can I? Yeah, it's not going to be easy for me to graph here. Uh, so, screw that. But, I mean, yeah, you could graph it and then look 
and you'd be able to see whether they intersect. Um, but I mean, if you're if you're using if you're writing a computer program, you can't really do that, can you? A computer can't take out a piece of graph paper and you know pull out its ruler and draw some lines. So we got to do it the math way. What is the math way? Well, first of all, we got to find where the lines intersect, not the segments, but the actual lines. And to do that, we need to get the equation of the line. Now, to find the equation of the line for this line segment, uh, all we need to do is find the slope and find the y-intercept. Now, we know the y-intercept for this one. It's given to us right here, 7. So we can just put a big old plus 7 there. The slope is going to be the rise over the run. So let's go 15 minus uh, 7 over 4 minus 0. x is equal to y. 15 minus 7 is 8 over 4. x plus 7 is equal to y. So it's 2x plus 7, y is equal to, which was like the line we had before, right? And if you do the same idea for this guy, now this guy we don't have the y-intercept directly, so we have to sort of calculate that, don't we? So what we could do is we can find the slope, which is going to be uh, 7 plus 2 over 6 plus six which is equal to two thirds and then all we got to do is we go well y let's just pick one here six no seven is equal to two thirds x which is six plus b and then we go seven minus uh, what's two thirds of six that's four is equal to b is equal to three so we know our b which is three so we can say y is equal to two-thirds x plus three. And there you go. You've got your two equations of your lines. Now you just solve for the point of intersection. Now if you're fairly wily, you'll realize that two-thirds is equal to six over nine, uh, which means this is our old this is the, the line that we've been using the whole time and this is the line that we used for the intersection so we already have the answer the point of intersection is at negative three and one uh, so we already have the point of intersection now how do we determine whether that point of intersection of these lines falls within the range that the line segments occupy because uh, that's what we're really interested in here just to bring the idea home, our lines are going to be like this, yeah, like like this boy here, kind of. That's a really bad line. And uh, where's the other one? Plus three. And it's a uh, rise of six over a run of nine. So, I mean, yeah, like this, yeah. So, like that. So, yeah. So, our lines are like this. Now the line segments, this one runs from here to x of 4, so it's going to run this way. So right now you can see one of our segments, the point of intersection is outside of one of our segments. So we know that these two segments can't intersect because this, the intersection is outside of one of the segments. The other segment is, uh, what is it, negative 6, negative 1, negative 6, negative 1, here, to 6, 7, here. So the point of intersection lies along one of the segments, but not the other one, and so these two line segments do not intersect. So the way you solve that is you just do it basically by, uh, by logic. In code, you do an if statement, right? You just check to see if the x, for example, the, uh, the x of the point of intersection falls within this range, 0 to 4, and it does not, so you automatically. If it does fall within this range, then you also check if it falls within this range. And if it falls within both of these ranges, then you have an intersection of the line segments. 
but and that could be useful i mean that that situation could definitely come up in certain uh, coding algorithms especially for things like collision it's a idea that is possible to occur